Welcome to the BamaInsider.com live stream on YouTube. It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Sunday, May 6th. I hope you had a great Cinco de Mayo. There were some great sports that took place on Saturday. We'll talk about those in just a minute. Um, at 11, 10 a.m., we'll talk to BamaInsider.com team rider Tony Sukalis. Um, talk about Braxton Key. Uh, who is now headed to Virginia, former Alabama basketball player. Uh, thanks for joining us on the program. All our coverage back on BamaInsider.com. We'll kick off the show uh, talking about the best from the weekend and end the show recapping incredible Alabama's incredible class of 2019. And, of course, take your calls at 205-686-3604. Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. My email is Kyle at BamaInsider.com. You can follow us on Twitter, Twitter, dot com backslash Bama Insider. Same on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Bama Insider. Um, Kentucky Derby uh, took place on Saturday. Uh, it was Justify winning as the favorite. Five to two odds going in and uh, some rather sloppy conditions. And uh, it was, uh, I love the Kentucky Derby. I mean, I'm not um, overall impressed with all the hats that the ladies wear and the suits that some of the, the, the men bring to the table, but overall Kentucky Derby, always, uh, a fun couple minutes on a Saturday. And, uh, how about, um, also, uh, to finish up on uh Saturday, it was, uh, LeBron James. My goodness. I mean, the, the Cavs defeated Toronto 105-103 to go up three games to zero. LeBron's shot at the end was magic, coast to coast with just seconds left. And uh, LeBron James finishes. I mean, the, the stats were incredible. 38 points, 14 to 26 from the field, 9 of 11 from the free throw line, 7 assists and 6 boards. How about the play of Kevin Love as well? I mean, he's been tearing it up. 21 points, 16 boards. The Cavs dominating the series three games to zero um moving on on saturday if you're a hockey fan like i am um it was the capitals um who defeated uh pittsburgh six to three in hockey is like the, the game was close all the way through but you know they do the open net towards the end of the game and then uh capitals hit some you know cross uh cross the ice uh um, shots and we got a caller uh, coming in uh, let's take this call right now um, hey what's going on this is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com thanks for giving us a call who do I got on the show Logan Watson what's up Logan what you got for us man how do you feel about Tua Loa's younger brother Oh, uh, thanks for calling, by the way. Uh, that's Talia, Talia Tungovaloa. Really like him. Um, people are really excited about what he brings to the table. Um, very comparable player to Tua. And um, I think it's going to be interesting to see Talia and Paul Tyson battle it out. We're going to talk about that later on the show. And um, those two will be 2019 quarterbacks. And as you know, Alabama didn't take a quarterback from 2018. So um, it's going to be interesting to see Talia and Paul Tyson, the great grandson of Bear Bryant, go at it here in a couple years. But uh, no, I appreciate the, sh the calling, man. You got anything else? You watch any, uh, any sports on Saturday? I mean, basketball, uh, Kentucky Derby, hockey. I mean, what, what, was your, uh, what were you doing on Cinco de Mayo yesterday, bud? Well, I did see LeBron James hit the game winner versus the Raptors. That's about it, though. Yeah, I mean, that shot coast-to-coast coast was pretty incredible. Let me ask you this before I let you go. LeBron James, he the greatest ever, or are you more a Michael Jordan type guy? LeBron James all the way. LeBron James. Hey, man, thanks for calling in. Calling any time, buddy. Appreciate it. No problem. All right. 205-686-3604. You can call in any time to the program, BamaInsider.com. My name is Kyle Henderson. Um, kind of going over the best from the weekend. In a few minutes, we'll have Tony Sukalis, our team writer, at BamaInsider.com call. Um, one of the best from the weekend, I thought, was uh, the the graduation ceremony for Alabama. I mean, I, I thought it was fantastic. Always important to get the degree, but I thought it was great. It was a great storyline. 22 pass and present Alabama football players were set to graduate. This story ran a couple days ago, but they did graduate, and it was great. I mean, um, 
guys like Derrick Henry, Bradley Bozeman, who uh, was a senior this year at Alabama, but haha ha Clinton Dix, a lot of these guys coming back to Alabama to finish out their degree, Amari Cooper, uh, Sherman Williams. Um, it, I mean, that was incredible, but my favorite story actually was um, on Sean Dion Hamilton. And uh, it was, I mean, you guys know Sean Dion Hamilton, right? You guys know him as a linebacker, what he does for Alabama over the course you know, over the last several seasons here, being a team leader, being a linebacker. But overall, he was uh, he missed uh, the national title game, ACL. We saw that. Saw him subbing in, uh, coaching the linebackers while Jeremy Pruitt was headed over to Tennessee. But he leaves Alabama with two national title rings, two degrees, uh, undergrad in business administration, and also got his undergrad and master's in sports business management. Sean Dion Hamilton um, also drafted in the NFL. So he leaves with two rings, two degrees, drafted in the NFL. I mean, talk about the example of the standards being that high at Alabama. That's what Nick Saban preaches, um, not only getting the degree, doing it on the field, getting the national title games, coaching your fellow teammates, and then being drafted in the NFL. Perfect ex example to show the recruits coming in. Also thought... Um, it was interesting over the weekend that uh, it was released by OverTheCap.com that the first round draft picks for Alabama are getting paid, right? Look at that. These are the first round guys, OverTheCap.com. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick, a cool 16.5, let's just say. De'Ron Payne going to the Redskins, 14.4. Rashawn Evans uh, with the Titans, 11.5. Calvin Ridley, 10.9 with the Atlanta Falcons. I mean, that is just money in the bank for those guys. And um, I mean, to think Minka was a junior. Um, Calvin and uh, Deron Payne, those guys could have been coming back. And those guys leaving Alabama and doing their thing now in the NFL, it's going to be amazing to follow those guys throughout their career in the NFL and setting the example of what these guys come to do at Alabama and then going forward in the NFL, pretty incredible. Taking your calls at 205-686-3604, Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Just a few minutes, we'll have Alabama Bama Insider team writer Tony Sukalis calling on the program and talk to us uh, about a couple of things. Want to ask him a couple of questions, but if you just, uh, it was actually just released, and, and and Tony was all over it, of course. Uh, but Braxton Key. Um, now a former forward at Alabama is headed to Virginia. And um, I wanted to, to get Tony's take on that and kind of get your take too. I mean, is this a big loss for Alabama going forward? We did hear the news a couple days ago that um, Riley Norris is returning for Alabama. Braxton Key's leaving. So I want to see how you guys are feeling about this uh, going forward. And, and after that, we will close the show out talking about Alabama's incredible Class of 2019, it's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Coming to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama on May 6th. Hope you had a great um, single de Mayo and enjoyed your sports. LeBron James doing his thing. We recapped the best of the weekend. And you can find all our coverage at BamaInsider.com. While we wait for uh, Tony to call us on the program, uh, we can just uh, highlight Alabama's incredible uh, Class of 2019 and it. The most recent commitment for Alabama is DJ Dell, um, six foot three, three hundred and twenty pound defensive tackle uh, out of Pinson, Alabama. And before that, it was Kevin Harris. Just kind of go through these guys one at a time. Uh, DJ Dell, three star, probably floating uh, to be a four star, I would assume. Six three, three hundred and twenty pounds, as mentioned, committed to Alabama. And Alabama, as Andrew Bone had written about on BamaInsider.com, really cleaning up in the state of Alabama, uh, DJ Dell, Alabama's 12th commitment. Before that, it was Kevin Harris, a 6'4", 218-pound weak side defensive end out of Loganville, Georgia. Uh, the weak side defensive end position for Alabama this year is loaded with guys like Terrell Lewis, uh, Christian Miller, Jamie Mosley, um, Yabi and Noma, who will be on campus pretty soon, but eventually... Uh, those guys are going to exit out, so you're going to need depth at that weak side defensive end position. J Jerez Park's a guy we uh, haven't talked about. It's going to be another up-and-comer, but glad to see Alabama filling in that weak, weak side defensive end position. 
um, with a four-star. Amari Kite uh, committed to Alabama on the 29th of April. Big boy, six foot six, three hundred pounds. Another guy out of Alabama, Maylene Thompson High School, and um, just a fantastic get for Alabama. Getting an offensive tackle of this size early on just speaks volumes about. Uh, the job that Brent Key is doing for Alabama. And we do have uh, Tony Sokalis, uh calling us uh, on the program. Let's get Tony piped in. And uh, hey, Tony, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Good to hear from you, buddy. Hey, man. It's good to be on. Hey, I was uh, kind of, I opened the show with uh, the best from Saturday, kind of going over some sports. I know you had a graduation to go to, but did you catch LeBron James' uh, m- uh, majestic shot towards the end yesterday by chance? You, you know, I missed it. I spent the whole time I, uh, my sister was actually graduating <laughs> from Alabama. Hey, it, we, but, uh, we, um, we also talked about uh, good, yeah. We also talked about the graduation, and I mentioned one of my favorite stories um, was Sean Dion Hamilton. I mean, Two two degrees, two national titles, also being drafted in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, he is a great story, and just all you know the injuries he's overcome and how he's rallied behind that. Um, that, that that's that is a good story. I think you're right, and he's a great kid too. I mean, he was a valedictorian in, in his high school, and so um, smart kid. And not not surprised he graduated at all. Um, Hale Henches actually graduated uh, on the same you know ceremony as my sister, so that was kind of interesting to see as well. Nice. Right, so we're talking with Tony Sukalis joining us on Sunday, May 6th. Uh, congratulations to your sister, by the way. Um, Thank you. Wanted to uh, talk to you about a news uh, news story that just came up. Braxton Key exiting uh, and headed to Virginia. What's your what's kind of what's the backstory on that? Well, you know, yeah, we, we learned that Braxton was going to transfer um, last month, and so there's a, it's not a surprise that he's transferring. But it, it is seems it does seem to be a good landing spot. I mean, this is a team that was the number one seed last year. Obviously, they, they famously uh, went out in the first round after losing to a number 16 seed, but it's a good program that's always there. It's going to be a perennial contender. So it's it's, it's going to be nice for Braxton to you know to be on a, on a winning team like that. Um, he certainly should should make a second straight trip to the NCAA tournament, um, although he won't be able to play this year. But um, he's got two more years of eligibility, and I'm sure that he'll be projected to make the tournament both of those years. Who is a who is a guy that we could see potentially filling the void uh, left by a guy like Braxton Key for this next basketball season? Um, you know, I, I, maybe like a Tevin Mack, uh, the graduate transfer. Um, depends on where they're going to put him. He's six six. Uh, it's actually he's a little bit um, it's a little bit shorter, so he probably won't fit that mold. Um, Braxton was interesting in the fact that he was, could be such a combo player. Um, you know, they are getting Riley Norris back as a scoring option. Um, and, you know, the, the, the Tevin Mack's going to be an, another scoring option. They're going to be a little bit different. You know, I mean, Galen Smith, somebody that can play that, that smaller four uh, or smaller five kind of guy that can really provide that defense. Uh, Braxton Key was a guy that could do a lot of things, but last season he didn't do them necessarily particularly well. He had kind of a disappointing season last year. So um, Alabama might be a little bit different team this next year. I mean, they're not going to have Colin Sexton, and whenever you lose a you know, generational talent like that, um, it's kind of like changes the identity of your team. So we're going to see a different Alabama team, but uh, there's plenty of talent there to, to I guess, fill the, the gaps left behind. We're talking with Tony Sukalis, our beat writer for the BamaInsider.com website. You can follow all of his great coverage on BamaInsider.com. Tony, what you got for us on Monday? I know there's a story you've been working on uh, regarding Rashawn Evans. What can we expect uh, on uh, yeah, on just, Monday? We had a chance to talk to Rashawn Evans um, You know, after he's been drafted by the Tennessee Titans, and I'm just kind of telling his story to the NFL. Uh, it's just really been interesting to talk with Rashawn and you know talk with his family and his former coaches, and um, I think we have an interesting story on tap without giving too much away. All right, good stuff. And you can uh, also go back and, and look for Tony's article regarding Dylan Moses, uh, one of our top stories uh, that was released last week. So, uh, no, I appreciate it, Tony. Thanks for calling in. Uh, we'll wrap up the show, and we'll look forward to uh, to catching up with you uh, uh, this week sometime. And uh, uh, best wishes to your uh, your Manchester United squad. Oh, yeah, they're, they're having a rough time, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. But, um, no, I appreciate you calling, and uh, we'll catch you back on the website, Tony. Thanks for calling in, buddy. All right, thanks, man. Tony Sukalis of BamaInsider.com. Look forward to his story coming in on Monday regarding Rashawn Evans. 
uh, does a great job along with Andrew Bone on BamaInsider.com. Um, we are talking about the class of 2019 and, um, we, uh, kind of just wrapping up the show, uh, kind of go one by one with the 12 Alabama commitments, Tanner Bowles, um, a three star that is committed to Alabama, six foot five, 270 pounds out of class of 2019, obviously out of Kentucky. So Alabama still dipping into that Southeastern region. I, I really haven't seen too much of Tanner Bowles and be interesting to see if he gets a four star bump in the next couple months, um, uh, Tanner Bowles is uh, kind of an interesting prospect in the sense that he's one of the few three stars that has committed to Alabama and did receive a committable offer. Um, another guy who committed before uh, Tanner Bowles, um, Talia Tungo Valo. And just as we had a caller uh, earlier to call in to talk about Talia, um, you know, one of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the entire country, four star, six foot, 190 pounds, um, you know. We hear great things about him, and uh, very here he's very comparable to his brother. And if uh, he's anything like his brother, he's going to be big time. And I, as I said earlier in the show, it's going to be interesting to see him uh, tally a battle with Paul Tyson, another quarterback that we'll talk about in just a few minutes. And um, I'm not sure if Talia has any type of dual threat abilities, but um, no, I mean he's a, he's certainly a guy who can spin it in Alabama with two quarterbacks already in the class of 2019 recruited by Tosh Lapoy. Moving on with the class of 2019, Shane Lee, um, inside linebacker, six foot, 235 pounds. I, I really feel that he has a similar build to Dylan Moses of Alabama, who's a sophomore now, uh, six foot, 235 pounds, completely shredded out of uh, Baltimore, Maryland, actually the same high school as Ayabi Anoma, who will be getting on campus here in the month of June for Alabama. Four-star, big-time prospect, the number one overall in the state and the number one overall in the position, top 40 player in the entire country, uh, big time. Uh, Christian Williams, uh, four-star cornerback out of Daphne, Alabama. Um, and uh, I know Andrew Bona really liked him. He was recruited by Joe Panunzio. Uh, the quarterbacks for Alabama, there's several that are going to be coming in uh, this year for Alabama. You still have Patrick Sertain, Josh Job, Jalen Armar Davis yet to arrive on campus. But the defensive backs, as you know, they, you, need, you always need depth at the position. Um, Paul Tyson, as we talked about, uh, 6'4", 210 pounds. Uh, big kid. I mean, he's a, he has an imposing presence, so to speak, committed to Alabama over several high-profile offers, being the great-grandson of Alabama. Um, Pro-style quarterback and a guy that I'm really eager to see come into Alabama and, and compete. I want to see him against Talia. I want to see him against Tua, um, against Jalen, if Jalen does stick around and see what he has. And it'll be nice to, to see a true, true pro-style quarterback. You know, I, I'm new to the Alabama scene, so I really haven't seen a, a true pro-style run this offense. And it'd be interesting to see what Paul Tyson can do with some of these younger wide receivers. Before Paul, it was Rashad Cheney, uh, 6'3", 263 pounds, out of Georgia, four-star, um, strong side defensive end, big kid, probably the same size as uh, a guy like Anthony Jennings. I think Anthony Jennings probably the same size, uh, around 265 pounds, four-star, and a uh, big pickup for Alabama early on in the class of 2019. Uh, Brandon Turnage. Uh, another cornerback, six foot one, 185 pounds, and actually a guy that Andrew Bone of BamaInsider.com doesn't expect to sign with this class. So maybe keep an eye on Brandon Turnage in, in, as far as a guy who could decommit uh, over the next couple months, recruited by Joe Panunzio and Pete Golding um, of Alabama. Uh, King Makata, uh, six foot, 220 pounds, four star. Really like what this guy brings to the table. Another commitment from the state of Georgia. Um, tenth best athlete in the state of Georgia, committing to Alabama early on. Shut his recruiting process down. And um, that was, he committed to Alabama way back in December, um, before Christmas. I think December, there, there it is. Um, December 15th, 2017, one of Alabama's first on board. And then um, before him, it was Pierce Quick. And Pierce Quick has just been a fantastic recruiting tool for Alabama. Six foot five, 270 pounds. And um, out of Trussellville, Alabama. And, and a guy who I think is going to have a big career at Alabama. And he's really been recruiting well for the Crimson Tide overall. Just really going after these this class 2019 and helping build this class together. 
overall, Alabama has a number two class in the nation behind Oklahoma. Oklahoma has um, 11 commitments, and believe it or not, Oklahoma has two five stars uh, committed right now. Alabama with no five stars, 10 four stars, and 10, and excuse me, two three stars for. Uh, composite average at 3.83, um, which is actually higher than Oklahoma's, but those five stars are going to really bump you up in the Rivals.com uh, team rankings. My name is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. Um, what's up, William? Thanks for joining the show. Everyone is talking about the offensive line recruits involved, but the D-line possibilities are just as good. No, I, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think um, landing a guy like DJ Dell, uh, recently at the defensive tackle position um, was a huge get for Alabama. I mean, um, the defensive tackle position cannot be uh, <clears throat> overrated in any aspect. Here's DJ Dell's profile real quick. Uh, just a big pickup. You know, I, I'm really excited to see what um, Deron Payne, you know, like what Quinn Williams, excuse me, can do following Deron Payne because Deron Payne did such a phenomenal job at Alabama. And uh, Quinn Williams has looked nice, though. I mean, and on the side of uh, Quinn and Williams, you're going to have Raekwon Davis and Isaiah Bugg. So those guys together um, should be a very formidable defensive line. And then, of course, on the outside, you're going to have guys, edge rushers like Terrell Lewis, um, Anthony Jennings when he gets back, Christian Miller coming in. Guys that should provide uh, a very d big time and dangerous defense for uh, 2000 for the 2018 season. Um, my name is Kyle Henderson, AlabamaInsider.com, coming to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, I'll end the show here pretty soon. And as I always say, be, be good people. And if you have served in the United States military, we certainly appreciate what you have done for our great country. You can follow all our coverage back on BamaInsider.com. You can call into the program, 205-686-3604. If I don't answer, you can leave a, a voicemail. I'll play it on the show next time. I appreciate all the support. Uh, give us a shot at BamaInsider.com. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. From Tuscaloosa, Alabama, on Sunday, May 6th, this is Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com. See ya.